Previously on Anything Goes. Yeah. You know, we could just all go out. Right. And so try to get on the same page. But I just... Uh, I just got to go tell jokes. I don't give a fuck. Now, how is, how is, you, you went this year to JFL. You've been many times, but how has JFL changed for you? Or has it very much stayed the same? Um, well, my, my attitude towards it has changed immensely. Cause when I first went there, I, the first few times I was terrified. Right. And I was so excited. So it was all extreme. Yeah. Uh, feeling. Sure. Uh, every feeling uh, to the, ex- yeah, highs, to the, lows, to it's, the yeah. upteam. Sure. But then over the years, you, you actually settle into it. Right. And you start to realize these are the best people to entertain because how I always thought this, how can we're, I, how, I'm less worried doing like the eat in the house on a Tuesday. Yeah. For like <laughs> freaking drunks at the bar, whatever the hell is going on. Drunk newfies and fat yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. People that don't know what there's a show on. What is this? You know, right. and I'm not nervous at all, but I would be nervous in front of what, 500, 600, maybe a thousand people that have spent 50 bucks a pop that are dying for it should be. You should be less nervous for that. And finally, it is like that now. I'm right. less nervous now in a good room. Sure. And and I'm just less nervous in fucking general. I've done this so long. You know, yeah, of course. And I love, there's a beautiful thing about being 50 where fuck you just yeah. comes out of you. Right. Like, yeah, kiss my ass. <laughs> this is all for me now. Yeah, of course. I'm on borrowed time. Yep. And now, let's get to a new exciting show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for some laughs? Are you? Don't touch that dial. It was molested, and it brings back horrible memories. This is Anything Goes with Darren Frost. How the fuck am I funny? Dave Martin. What have we got here? A fucking comedian. And Kathleen McGee. And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you. Can you dig it? coming in like what obviously i have my health thing i can talk about i've got two or three of those um anything recently that's happened in the news that we want to talk about i don't know i didn't i mean i knew about the the shooting at atlanta and the one in colorado but i didn't know that there have been seven shootings yeah. in the last seven days yep i well i guess maybe it was i don't know if there was one today but but that's just, it's, you know, I don't even, like, recognize it anymore, but, um, I want to ask Jenny if, like, when, if someone dies, like, if you were to die in your sleep, would you eventually shit yourself? I don't know. I know you do when you get, when, if you hang yourself, yeah. like, your neck snapping, that causes you to shit yourself. Well, and I think any sort of like impact or something like that. I was just having an argument with someone, and, were, and I was just like, I don't like because that's like, funny unto itself. Who argues about that kind of thing? Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, people that walk away very quickly. Um, and then we got the thing about Jenny's posts, which also like everyone thought I wrote that post, but I was just that was a repost. Oh, really? I thought you wrote it. No. So then I had all these fucking people reach out that I was suicidal. Oh. Well, you know, which oh. is nice. Don't get me wrong. But I'm like, I had to keep going. No, nah, you know, thanks. I appreciate it. But I didn't write that. Oh, okay. That's well. why I changed it. And I said, it. the first line now says, edit. I didn't write this. I just reposted. Oh, I didn't see you repost it. Yeah. I just thought, well, who is this? Who is this softer, gentler, woke Darren Frost? That's Sure. <laughs> Yeah, we well, that's guys. That. That's why I had to say this is, goes against your character. Yes. Fuck it, but yes, I mean you know they're they're very kind words and they're very supportive. Uh, I think uh, here she comes. Okay, walking down the street, she gets the funniest looks from All everyone right. she meets. Hey, hey, it's Jenny. Joining, joining. Oh. Hey, is that me? Hello. Oh, hi there. Hi there. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks, like, it looks, 
I said, are, are you reporting from Osama bin Laden's uh, <laughs> escape house in Afghanistan? No. Okay. No, does it look does it look Afghani here? <laughs> no, it's no, it, yeah. and also the, the the camera's framed weird. You got to move your camera over the side. There you go. That's better. Because this like is what I'm, it looked I'm, like to us. Yeah, hey, how I'm, you yeah. doing? I'm, I'm waiting for you to hold up a copy of today's newspaper so we know it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. actually you and you're not you know yeah. being held I've, captive I've, on. I've been thinking about going underground. You know, we'll we'll see. Well, we'll get into that. Uh, are you recording, Dave? Yes. Okay, good. So, yeah, you. Uh, this we'll start off with uh, what's happened the last uh, week or two. Um, so let's jump right into your situation with a couple of memes that you reposted. Um, mm -hmm. And some people got quite upset. Now, first of all, you don't create memes. Any of the memes that you've posted... They're all just reposts, correct? That's right, right, yeah. I share them for the most part. Sometimes I make them, like 95% of the time, no, I don't. Right. So yeah, These ones I didn't. Right, and especially the ones that you did recently, you just reposted them. That's right, yeah. Right. Um, so there, there's a difference right there. Like, that, that's a difference right there. Like, yeah. some people are so pissed off that I think they think that you wrote the meme. Well, I wish I did because it's funny, right? right like I right. wish I did. I would, I, I, but you know, yeah, they're mad at they're mad about it. They're obviously very mad about. It. I find people. This I don't know Eric, if you guys have felt it, this, but it's, this it's the Eric Clapton one. Yeah, I, okay. I posted a meme about Eric Clapton's son. All right, but we'll, we'll we'll show a photo of the actual meme. Okay. Itself during the show. It's not nice, but I thought that everybody knew Anthony Jeselnik already. You know, he had that bit about it. So I feel I feel like he started it. I felt like it was already out there. I wasn't actually expecting everybody to go crazy and call me a bad person. But um, I've noticed people, just in general, I think that everybody's really clenched lately. I think that's something that I've been noticing. Well, I think anytime you go after kids, I mean, um, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying you, you can't, I, but I think that people get upset like I have a bit on my new album about a baby getting fucked to death by a dog. You know, it's a it's an eight that's minute a, bit, and a, you know, isn't that an old joke though? Yeah, yeah, it's old. Oh, okay. But I I, I never had it on any of my albums. I only I kept coming back and forth to the bit because I couldn't get it to work well enough. But anyway, just, the bottom the yeah. bottom line is it's a story about a baby getting fucked to death, and a lot of people got upset with me telling that joke. But yeah. my attitude was like, it's a new story that actually happened. And I'm not glad what? the baby died. It really happened? Yes. <laughs> I'm okay. going to Google that. I'm going to Google that. But no, but, but before, okay, I get the baby thing. I like babies too. Um, but it was before that. It was, I had a, what was it? It was, it was a, a something about a, 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 a Kennedy, Jackie Kennedy thing. Yeah, yeah, the Kennedy. Well, let's session. not let's not get let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Okay, okay, first of all, okay. let's let's just explain what the 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 tears in heaven one is first, and then we'll go to the Jackie Kennedy. Okay. So, what exactly? And I know he's putting the picture up, but in case someone isn't going to see it, what does the actual meme say? It's got a, a picture a, of his kid hanging out the window, or a kid. A kid, yeah, uh, a kid that's hanging like many many stories up. Uh, you can tell, and it says. Uh, Oh, Eric Clapton says, does anybody have an idea for a song? And then Eric Clapton's kid, that's his move to inspire right. Right. Tears in Heaven, which is just like the Anthony Jeselnik. He did a bit that was just like it. Um, and, you know, I laughed my ass off when he did it. So I saw the meme. I didn't think much before sharing it. I didn't think it was going to be a, you know. Right. To me, to me, as soon as he writes a song about it, it's fair game. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, like, yeah, I, I, get, I could get it, but like I said, they were all really, they were already really mad at me. I just felt as soon as, uh, as soon as I got back from jail, Facebook jail, um, I, I just felt that uh, people were um, really emotional. Uh, but you also, so the, a part of it was because this was the second time in almost a week that you did something that a lot of people didn't like. So now let's move backwards. Okay. To the JFK, uh, JFK meme, well, which is the one. Oh, go ahead, Dave. Why? Okay, I, I want to just say, well, first of all, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know exactly Anthony Jeselnik's joke. I don't know what joke he does for or what's his joke so exactly. Good. It's Pardon? so good, but okay. 
Oh, do you? It's so good. But yeah. Could you do the bit without butchering it, or uh, or do you know? Oh, the... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says that he used to have. He's Anthony Jeselnik says I used to have a two-year-old son, and but he died. He died the same reason, the same way that Eric Clapton's son died for inspiration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, that's a good yeah, bit. And and then he did, and he goes on and on. He calls the kid clumsy. I think at one point, like you know, it's, it's right. Pretty, it's, well, it's just, it's I mean, that, that was sort of a, a street joke for a while right after the couple of, the, I mean, there was a street joke floating around for a while, just like, if that kid was a bag of cocaine, Eric Clapton would have never have let it fall out of the window. Right, or, exactly. Uh, like, I, I remember even how, like, because I, I think that Tears in Heaven and Life is a Highway were up for gra um, best song of the year at the Grammys. I remember to, um, Tom Cochran was on the Howard Stern show, and Howard Stern said, man, if only if Eric Clapton knew how to close a uh, a window, you would be getting a Grammy for sure. <laughs> Just because everyone was giving it to him for that sympathy thing. Oh. Um, but I think that, that's just the price of being, or that's just the, the power of being yeah. famous. Of so just a Anthony Jeselnik is sort of like, he can get away with those bits. And I think the fact that, mm. I mean, A, you didn't, you didn't write them, and B, oh. uh, but it, it's also funny that you don't even necessarily need to write something to catch a bunch of shit these days. Oh. Like that guy from Mumford and Sons, who plays the bitch, be, uh, the banjo? I, I, I also he, took a beating over that too. But oh, well, but the guy from he said he just liked a book about Antifa, <laughs> and he has to leave the band for a while. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but he's he's leaving it permanently. But yeah, oh, okay. no, I was I put it up because I thought it was funny. His apology for reading this book and saying to the author that it was a good book, it read like, you know, like a hostage video apology where he's crying, like, I realize that I hurt people and the power of the choices that I make. And Steph and I was like, You just read a book. He's 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 apologizing like he threw a baby out the window, you know? <laughs> but, yeah. but he just wrote a book. Uh read a book. He read a book. And I guess everybody hates I I don't know a bunch about the book. I don't care. I don't. I, there's no book that would make me feel like that was proportionate. That was, right. No, uh, but it's just funny that he didn't. He, he he didn't write the book. He didn't have anything to do with it. He, he right. Just, he just said he liked it, and that's enough for people to start piling on these days. Do you? I watched a QAnon uh, documentary, and do you go to like where do you usually find these these memes? Oh, just on Facebook. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I thought because I just I. Jenny's got some fucked up friends. <laughs> well, I, I just, they showed a couple of clips from, I've, I've never been on 4chan before, but they showed a little bit of the content that goes on 4chan. And uh, it is a jaw dropping of, because it is literally free speech and also the downside of free speech as well. Right. So, yeah, it's uh, incels, right? Lots of incels there. Well, I, I, I it's, but I, it's anyone that just doesn't want to be, uh, ragged on for uh, well, what they're sharing and what they're saying. So. Well, maybe I should go there. Maybe I need to go there. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. There's also a <laughs> lot of hate there. I mean, I think yeah. I think Twitter is like, Twitter is like the shallow end of mm -hmm. bullshit and the cesspool that the yeah. internet can be. And I think 4chan is that like, you know, it's yeah. like you're a baby at Tommy Lee's house. You know, it's like <laughs> you are not getting Dave. up from that. Dave. I know. But Darren, do you remember the? Do you remember the joke I used to do? Then this was a true story too, about the girl that went to her high school prom nine months pregnant. Yes, yes. And it's in your it's in your comedy now. And then she this is like if she was in New Jersey, and she goes to the uh, bathroom and has the baby in the toilet, and then she scoops up the baby and then throws it in the garbage, and uh, then goes back out and enjoys the rest of the high school prom. I think uh, uh, to a degree that like every story that you might read in the news has a certain message to it. And uh, I'm going to tell you a story, and uh, I'll tell you what message I got out of it. Uh, this happened maybe about a year or so ago. There was a girl down in the United States, and uh, she's going to her high school prom, and uh, she's uh, nine months pregnant, and she's smoking, and she's drinking up a storm the entire in the evening, right? So at some point, at some point in the evening, she starts feeling, during her high school prom, she starts feeling this kicking sensation in her tummy. Like, what could this be? So she, what she does, she goes into the washroom, and she sits down on the toilet, and she squeezes out her baby. What's funk? Now, okay, right. 
She squeezes out the baby. Now, at this point, a little birthing-like incident is not going to hold her back because what she does next is she gets up, she goes back outside, and she tries to enjoy the rest of her high school prom. Now, you know what I think the message here is? That there's some people out there that just gotta dance. <laughs> do, 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 Oh yeah, what's that? Mummy would love to help you out, but they're playing Come on Eileen by Dexie's Midnight Runners. <laughs> it's retro ladies night, isn't it? Great. Do 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 do. I'm in high school. I'm having the time of my life. I can have lots of babies. Do 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 do. Yeah. And the punchline is, well, some people just got to dance, and, <laughs> which is, but yeah. I'll, I mean, I, I don't know if but I But Dave, can at the end of that story, a baby is hurt. Well, yeah, it is a dead baby. I don't know if they, if they would even put, I was surprised mm -hmm. that they put it on air in the first place, but. Yeah. If it were up to me, I'd go and I'd, you know, stop Eric Clapton's baby from falling out the window. You know, I'm not. Right. Happy that that happened to any baby. If it were up to me, that would have never happened. Right. But yeah. that's but it's like, it's like if we move backwards <laughs> now to the JFK meme, you know, your joke is it's a it's a it's the image of of Jackie. I thought it was so tame. Yeah, yeah, really? exiting the car from the back, yeah. getting you know taken off because she doesn't want to get shot. Yeah, yeah and, she's crawling out of the car. Right, and your and the words in that meme say what again? Uh, that uh, women always leave you at your worst moment or at your lowest point. Right. Right. And he said, well, and he's funny dead, he's sitting there, but there's no blood or guts. Yeah, it's right. true. <laughs> I thought there's no blood or guts in the picture. It's a picture we've seen before. I thought. Right. I re I really didn't expect everybody to go mental about it, or you know, it was it was, it was sixty years ago, right? Like, it's been a long. But to me, the but, idea yeah. that, that the joke is. Yeah. A horrible thing. Yeah. That picture could never be what you're talking about. <laughs> That's why it's funny. Yes. And people yes. don't get that. But these are the same people that follow you, which is what makes no sense to me well, the, whatsoever. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and, and they make these assumptions about me. I think that I'm I'm this terrible person that they're going to expose right. or something. That, so they, 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 they attack me because they don't like the, the memes that I shared, but they won't leave. Right. Um, but I haven't changed. I always like, you know, dark uh, humor. And I always shared, I've shared much worse memes mm -hmm. than these two. Much darker, much worse. So I just feel like there's something in the water with people lately. I don't know. You are, you are the Gilbert Godfrey of 2021. I guess they're, so. They're going to cancel the shit out of you. I guess so, yeah. I don't be like yeah, it right is, now. It is weird that people do stick around, though. It's like... Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. There you, don't one to, you don't have to defriend someone. You can easily just not follow them, and then you have the illusion that you are still friends. Even right. though you but would. I lost, like, 30, 40 friends this week. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that but, shows But the, in the end, did you really? Yeah, I mean, that shows <laughs> no, the... No, in the, in the end, I learned who my real friends were, didn't right. I? Yeah. The other 2,700 or right. whatever of uh, people I've never met. Right. But, um, yeah, uh, no, I uh, I did not expect any of that. I had to um, defend my character and stuff, and they're like, you know, and they're all like, do you know what it's like when, you know, getting somebody gets shot in the head? Do you understand what she went through? And, like, you know, just trying to, like, like somebody took a picture of my own kid from my Facebook and was like, would it be funny if she fell out the window? I was like, Jesus. Well, you um, know, I'm always, I'm always surprised. Like when it's, when it comes to nine to fivers, I get yeah. it. They're never going to understand why that's funny and why yeah. we say some of those things. That's okay. one thing. Yeah. But when it's another performer and you have oh, to yeah. explain to them, then it's a whole new level of, what the fuck are you talking about? So I used to do this bit about the Beatles. Mm -hmm. So uh, George Harrison died. And I said, um, and the day after he died, I posted this joke. You know, I think it's a pretty good Beatles joke. It's not great, but it's pretty good. <laughs> and I said, you know, Stuart Sutcliffe died, John Lennon died, and now George Harrison died. The Beatles are dying in order of artistic credibility. <laughs> I said, Pete Best, you're, you're next. Man, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so I go, Pete Best, you're next. 
I'm a I'm a Ringo guy, so right. Yeah. <laughs> but that is insinuating <laughs> that Paul is not an artist or Ringo is not an artist. And this Beatle fan went nuts. Um, like going, Paul is great. He's never given his due. I'm like, I never said that. The joke is obviously Pete Best is not more artistic than fucking Paul McCartney. That's the joke. Yeah. And this is a comedy writer I'm having this argument with. He's like, well, I just get touchy. I'm like, you're a fucking comedy I'm guy. Touchy. And you're fucking yeah. doing this? I had people Fuck being yourself. like, yeah, the Kennedy thing means something special to me. It's like, well, it didn't just happen to you. Right. Like, the Beatles belongs to the world. We're all allowed to talk about them. Like, you know? And at the, end of the, at the end of it, it's just Darren's opinion. If there's an opinion inside that joke that's real, it's just... Right. It, it's, it's, like, it's like the Rolling Stones-Beatles argument, you know? It's like... At the end of it, it's just you go listen to whatever the fuck you want, but right, um, it, it, it yeah. shouldn't be controversial. It shouldn't be a controversial thing, and people are just like, yeah, no, they won't take it. And it's just like, what the hell? And you know, but not to piggyback on something, but yeah. the history of the Beatles, Paul was always seen as the least artist of them all. John Lennon and George were the artsy fartsy ones, and Paul was the one who liked to sing silly love He's too songs. Cute. I mean, that was. Yeah. That wasn't true because, in in essence, he wrote some very artistic songs. But that was oh, he's the much better kind of, than John. So. Yeah, you know, and so that's it's just playing up on on a kind of cliche stereotype that's out there. Yeah. And like I said, when you have to argue with someone in the business, you're like, this is not a business I really want to be around much anymore. Oh, I, no. I think it's just great, Jenny, that you're getting all these uh, housewives from the suburbs to brush up on their Photoshop skills. You know, yeah, raising yeah. your kid. Uh, that, that's a bit over the line, too. It's like, I'm even sort of like, I mean, when you start poking at fun at, and using someone's kids as the fodder for a, what, like it, a comparison, it's, it's, it's definitely over the line. If I was a more sensitive person, you know, I could definitely uh, go ape shit about that. But, you know, I, I, it's like they're trying to, like, make me understand why it's that. Like, do you know what a child really is? Look, you have a child. And it's like, yeah. I get it. Like, it's not that I don't understand. It's not that I thought the joke was funny because I don't understand children and life and death. Like, you yeah. know, um, right. or <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. Uh, and, but, but there were some comedians in there. It's more comedians. Uh, I, I can't, I can't be that upset when it's, uh, you know, uh, when it's just some nine to five or like you said. Right. You know, real and comedians. even comedians, I'm fine if they class. don't. I am fine when a comedian doesn't want me to tell the joke because they don't like it, you yeah. know, but don't tell me not to do it or don't say I can't do it. It's like you play to your fans, I'll play to mine. Mm. And I don't care if there's more for you or if there's more for me. It's not about that. It's like, this is what I want to do. And that's it. And the yeah. world is getting so small. Yeah. This is Anthony Jeselnik. That's right, Anthony Jeselnik. You're listening to Anything Goes with Darren Frost on XM Radio's Laugh Attack. That's right, Anthony Jeselnik. Uh, debate the different uh, the levels of uh, Black Sabbath. Of yeah. Who was the now, Dave, man. you had a question for Jenny. We were talking about this before the show. So, uh, picture yeah, of your I question. Oh, okay. Well, my question is, and I don't even know if you would know this, but I guess you would because there's a, a dead body involved. Um, yeah. And for those I, who I, don't I, know, I, Dave, for those that don't know, Jenny um, works in the in the funeral business. So, so go ahead. Mortician? Would I would? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mortician. That's one of the many titles. Uh, the devil. I have many names. <laughs> well, I mean. If, so I know that someone's. I, I know that like when I was I was having a conversation with someone and I don't know how or or when, but I was I was sort of are making. I was trying to argue that um, that you only shit yourself when you get if you're hanged or you're in a car crash or your body is sort of jolted, then you shit yourself. But they were saying no, you know, you di when you die, you you will eventually shit. And I and how is that? Like what I yeah, always uh, thought, it really takes an effort. I mean, yeah. unless it's just one of those magic shits, but it it takes effort. And yeah, they don't they don't just yeah they don't just uh, yeah a uh, choky choky hanged. I wouldn't say car accident, not necessarily like jolted or scared the shit out of you. Anything choky is for sure 
right. uh, you're going to shit yourself because there's a lot of straining, right? Right. Uh, but, but if you were to die uh, in your sleep, not everybody, not everybody eliminates a death. That's that's something that people think. They don't all have, you know, um, okay. a, a diaper full of shit all the time when I get them. Um, oh, all right. I, I just but like if, if someone dies in their sleep, they're not going to like and if they were left later there for, when they're dead. Well, no. yeah, if you left them there for a couple of days, they're not going to eventually shit. No. Oh, okay, no. all right. No. Gas will build up, quick... their stomachs will swell, all kinds of terrible things will happen, but no, they're not going to shit. All right, I gotta, I just, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to pick up some cleaning supplies for something I got to do later. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, the favorite part of the story is when me and Dave were talking about it, he's like, yeah, I had this argument with this guy. I'm like, who fucking argues about this kind of thing? <laughs> that you shit yourself. People call me all the time, settle a bit. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it was sort of one of those sort of what if questions of just mm -hmm. like, you know, it's always like, well, when, when does a, a cupcake become a, when does a muffin become a cupcake or it's something true, like right? that? Of less like, they're the two things, similar forms. But no, one, no, one Dave. Dave, the what if, sir, <laughs> the what if is you found a bag of money. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those. You found a drunk girl beside a dumpster uh -huh. and she was getting <laughs> raped. What would you do? That's a oh, what if. Okay. You know, <laughs> not, not did you shit yourself and you die in your sleep? Yeah. I thought you were, yeah. I didn't know where you were going with that girl behind the dumpster. I was like, no. well, what if you find a girl behind a dumpster? And I was like, and am I raping? Well, there's, there's oh, that just, famous hey, case yeah. of, these, of the girl who's got raped behind a dumpster and these guys came upon it, stopped it, and the guy didn't even fucking go to jail. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, that was Brock Turner. Yeah. The, uh, Brock Turner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, can always I remember Brock stopped, Turner. It, it, nobody would have been scared of Brock Turner. He wasn't scary. Yeah. Anybody would have stopped it. Um, well, yeah. 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 I nobody mean, likes him. I think anybody would have stopped it. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. Anyways, well, let's, let's change, we'll change the subject from Brock Turner. <laughs> Darren's like, why are you talking about dead people with your friends? Why aren't you having normal conversations yes. about girls by dumpsters getting yes. raped by And what would swimmers? you do? That's a show on <laughs> that show. What would you do? They, they need to do that scenario on that. What would you do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but anyway, not just, just not just immigrants being yelled at in coffee shops. It should be, you know, <laughs> walking by a dumpster and something bad's happening. Yeah. yeah, give me a real moral quandary here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> find the wallet. Here, you, would you stop it, right? Like, uh, yeah. Find, if you find the wallet, you, you you take the money and you throw the wallet in the uh, post office box. That's oh, all. Yeah. You know, that, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. That's fine. <laughs> That's the thing to do. Mm hmm. Yeah, I actually have an interview tomorrow morning. I think I'm gonna get back at the back in the biz, back in the biz there with the dead oh, yeah? bodies. So, yeah. Oh. We'll see how that goes. I had a little hiatus. Sometimes you need a break. Why should you never really think of that though? It's like mortician's a job that you really have to actually go there for. It's not like you can do that over oh, yeah. Zoom. Like you can't just yeah. talk someone through whatever you know. No. You, you, yeah, yeah. Em embalming. No, yeah, right. you have to be present. Right. Um, yeah, you can't phone it in. You, it's uh, it's a full contact sport. So um, yeah, I will uh, be getting back to that after a couple of years. And uh, yeah, that'll be a good thing. And this is the place that does some of the cool stuff, like you know, um, murder scenes and stuff, and news stories. So maybe I'll be on the news sometimes. CP twenty four. There we go. Oh, right on. Yeah. I just hey, that, I just Dave, you've been on that four times now, haven't you? Only three times. Oh, Only three really? Times. Yeah, we just had the anniversary when there was a shooting in my neighborhood of my appearance on CP24. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. We yeah. always say CP24 lets no stretcher go unfilmed. That's their thing. They, they want to have stretcher yeah. shot so bad. You know, whenever whenever I think of uh, the funeral business, I was, there's a comic named Dave Hook, and I'm not sure if I told you this joke uh, the last time we talked to, uh, to you about your business, but he had a great joke about he's, like, uh, doing an impression of uh, the people at the funeral home when they wheeled in Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> and the guy's like, you know what? I got this. You, uh, I'll lock up. You take off. You take off. I, I, I got this one. I'll lock, it. I'll lock up. Hey, take the rest of the night off. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I got to stay late. I'm sorry, dear. I got to stay late. Too. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, <laughs> everyone thinks there's a lot of fucking of the dead that goes on and only creepy people. And I wish that I had some stories like that. People ask me about it. It's right. an urban legend. If anybody can give me any real credible proof that a funeral director has ever had sex with a dead body, I'd love to hear. Because everybody, like, what happened in my hometown, 
It's always this vague shit. And it's always it's always a male director fucking a dead female. Well, well it's never the men, other way. Men are a lot pervier, you know. It's right. not that it's not that, you know, if anybody's gonna, it's gonna be a man, probably. But there well, is but they're, yeah, they what, can't. They're, they're like when they're dead, they can't have an erection, right? No, what? no, they right. uh, no, I don't really think so. No. Isn't isn't that one of the things that happens that some got done men die with wood and and yeah, I, 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 I know. I'm not like a fraud that I don't have a good solid answer for this. I um, never, I, I only ever saw it once. It, I don't under, I, I don't think it. That could have been a pump or something medical, right. like a medical. Right. Implant, because because it, because it, you need blood flow, don't you? Right. Like, that's my sense. thing. How, like, how could it last? It's... But it was on six feet under, and six feet under does do their homework. They don't usually put bullshit in there, and mm -hmm. they did have that in an episode. Probably, so a fake I, dick. I don't, I, Probably a fake dick with a pump or something. But I, I don't, yeah, well, it's well, a no, TV I don't show. Think it's not this. a documentary. It's not a, a real <laughs> dick. I, mean, I did mean that the actual dick was a real dead hard dick. I just meant that, like, I don't think they would say that it happens if it didn't. It's a bit, it's a gray area. I don't think that can happen. But there is a movie, the Canadian movie called Kissed. Um, yes, yep. About the female, yeah, mortician, yeah. necrophile with the Sarah McLaughlin soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, people ask me about I that did, one. I did a, a movie and they gave me a fake dick with a pump in the whole bit. And the guy's like, this is the same technology that you used in Boogie Nights. I'm like, all right, bring it on. <laughs> were you supposed to use the, what, what was the, the, what were you supposed to use the pump on yourself for the scene? I, or For a scene, I just sit, I was sitting on a couch watching a, a movie of a girl getting smacked around and I was supposed to get a, a visible heart on. And so they had this pump. <laughs> And they fucking did it. And Emil Hirsch, who's now a huge actor, oh, uh, yeah. he was yeah, he was thirteen at the time. He's sitting beside me, sees me, gets the heart on, and just leaves. So the real you fucking have to really awkward. get a real you have to get a heart on for the movie. I'm not going to tell you whether pump. I did or not, but they had a pump. I think that would break a lot of sort of union rules for actors. My dick wasn't hard, Dave. Like That's on what command. The okay, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a genetic thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah I, I know, but... Fake dick. Make it look like... <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 no, I'm just saying. I just, it was, that, it's like, that is a yeah, lot Yeah, there was a fluffer before each take. She just came by, <laughs> rubbed my balls a little, and go. No, I was just sort of like, uh, I just, they gave you a, a pump for yourself, and... No, no, thought, it was another dude. He was off camera, and a tube ran, and he had like, almost like a bike pump, and he'd push it down, and the dick would go... Yeah, it was oh. in the prop department. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought it was like a pump, like those penis pumps that you see. I, I really didn't really, you didn't work oh, the, clear yeah, on yeah, your, yeah. Awesome right. I was thinking the other day too, if like, if you tried to, dis when you talk about the, the sleaziness of men, like if you were to ever describe to someone today, like, I mean, now that you, I mean, also there was like a, I think it's, um, a, what, what's the big Mormon state? Is it Utah? Yes. Yeah. I think Utah, they're one of their, their governors not allowing porn to be uh, on cell phones anymore. It's like uh, uh, there's some. Uh, How yeah, can they stop of, that? I don't, I don't. I don't know the whole story, but it is a story that they're trying to take like uh, porn off of uh, or trying to get porn off the internet in for carriers in in that state. They can try, okay. but I mean, I don't know if you ever noticed that, like Google. You know when you put in the first few letters or something and then it automatically your Google bar will, you know, guess what you're going to put in. So if you put, you know, Y-O-U, it'll go YouTube and it'll give you examples. Yeah. You can't put a single porn site in and it will finish it for you. So I'm not sure if that's the Google that's done that or. Yeah, that's or, probably by design, right? Because they don't well, want kids to accidentally right. match so the keyboard. You have to, you literally have to put in every letter of what, like if you want red tube, you have to put red tube. If you mm -hmm. want you porn, I'm not saying I know them all, but if whatever <laughs> that you want, you've got to actually put all the letters in because it will not like give you the example. The, any, the point that I'm getting to is if you had to describe to someone from now that like men would actually go to some place and go into a booth and right. put in a quarter and watch like a video for like, uh, like what, like a couple of minutes or something like that. And, and like when, when they used to have like peep show booths, you have to yeah, actually what, explain to that someone, someone that like, that was a thing. Or that porn so theaters. Many ways. Or, porn, or porn theaters. Guys would go to porn theaters and jack off. They still yeah, have I those think, though. They still yeah. have those. 
I think it's a gay thing, isn't Where? it? Where? Isn't, isn't it to meet people? Do they not have those um, young anymore? On uh, 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 theaters? Have porn theaters? When, when was the last time you've been on Young Street? It, like, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't know. Well, there I know that nothing. Be, I know Young that Street is be... like an outdoor shopping mall now. There's nothing okay. there. Wait, what's his face? Fred Willard just got caught at a porn theater. That right? was in LA, though. And I think. Okay, that was in LA, so they still exist. Well, I, yeah, but I don't think these big grand theaters that. There used to be a theater right across the street from me in Toronto, the Metro Theater, mm -hmm. that yeah. that they they would it was a porn legit porn theater and like a, yeah. it was like a two hundred seat theater. It had a okay. it had a balcony that they converted into another theater upstairs where they would show like old kung fu movies at night. But then, yeah. but during the day, uh, I remember like, a, could my, someone, a friend could of mine someone up, actually could someone go on the balcony and just jack off onto people then back in the day. The, that was, it, was if there was like a balcony, I'm sure you really could have. But, but there was like, but there was a second <laughs> floor that they just converted into another theater. Anyways, for for kung fu movies, like I said, but but I thought my a friend of mine and I went in there because we thought, oh, that because they were going to be showing actual 35 millimeter films from the 80s or something, because they had like Miami Spice was a poster that they had outside. Right. So we thought, oh well, it's then you know it's like. Even porn films from the seventies, if or or from the eighties, they're not that raunchy. I mean, there is a lot of no. filler because they what tried to get away with the story, but yeah. Um, but yeah. So we went in, and it was literally just they had a satellite, and it was just some to the Spice Channel in the states. So they were just right. it was just a video projector of porn. But yeah, but if yeah. you had to tell someone no, guys would go into like little booths and put in a quarter because we had to do it that badly. Mm -hmm. It would just be like, I mean, it's convenient, I suppose, to have it on your phone now and at your home, but, but well, yeah. Well, just think of it, think of it like this. got those sex robots now. Everybody has one. Yeah. yeah People and, are marrying and, and, them. I have the four. 70s, in the 70s, to be a degenerate, that's what you would do, Dave. Things like you're talking about, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. that was seen as dirty and risque, you know? Yeah, and yeah. like you said, now... Midnight Cowboy. Right. Now... Dirty and risque is like way farther, right? Like now it's well, yeah, that's what they talk about. These kids that like these 15 year old kids that 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 need all this crazy shit to get off, you know. Right. Whereas 15 year old kids are supposed to, you know, just you know, need a silhouette of a whatever, but yeah, <laughs> now they need this like hardcore shit now because well, of the like, internet. Because it's of like 10 years ago, they were talking about you know. Uh, blowjobs were not that big of a deal for teenagers. That yeah. it's like when I was a teenager, that was a big fucking deal. I mean, <laughs> nobody talked about blowjobs. I got a blowjob. We just and where I grew up, it wasn't really talked about. <laughs> I yeah. got a I'm not saying it didn't well, happen. We, we but talked it, about the we talked. You know, we talked about. You know, my dad's got the Spice Channel, and him and my mom went out like that. You know, right. Was, but <laughs> now it's like the idea of getting a blowjob to teenagers isn't such a big deal no that's first base now with their ass right. eating stuff all their asshole stuff yeah, i like where darren grew up and it sounds like this i some... don't know i'm pointing over there the at the, the asshole yeah, that's the ass keeping corner that's <laughs> the I corner where you go to eat ass. assholes yeah i love i love with a place that darren's describing where he grew up where there's some like some old man on the street corner it's like gather around kids let me yeah. tell you about a story when i got a blow job yeah Ooh. <laughs>6 robots and like what is what is to be a degenerate now compared to the 70s i i mean i don't know that many degenerate people anymore i mean kenny robinson well, always likes to call himself a degenerate he's got some pretty fucking crazy stories but i'm sure if he met someone now that was deep into it it'd be a lot crazier yeah well he likes his feet right oh yeah um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah right, i don't you know, know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's a secret or anything. No, no, no. I don't think I let him out of his foot closet. No. Ready for the There was a, a, back in the day. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> we went to remember we went to that party, uh, Dave, at um, 
at, at the Eaton House? Uh, what the which which uh, party? What's her the... name? Ran it. Oh man, um, it's like an eyes wide shut party. No, but it was like voluptuous <laughs> and. Oh, club. Oh, uh, what's her? Um, yeah, the, I know the Rita. woman that runs at Rita. Yeah, Rita. And, uh, I guess there used to be they would have these events where all these uh, gigantic uh, BBW women would show up. Right. And it was like club attitude or club fatitude, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to know, depending on um, who you're uh, hanging around with. Um, but. Uh, and I went to it. That, I, that was the first time. I think you were with me, weren't you, Dave? Probably after a gig, yeah. We yeah, we were all at a gig, and we went there. Um, and but, I was I was with my wife, and we both went in. And you yeah. were there, Dave, and I, yeah. can't, I think Kenny was there. Sure. But, I mean, yeah, those sort of places are kind of interesting because it's sort of like there is a group of people that have come to one place because everybody knows what the other person wants, you know? Right. It's like if you like if you go to see an ABBA cover band, you know everyone around you. They're into ABBA right. enough to go to see yeah. a cover band, and and it's sort of like guys go there because they know who's going to be there, and the women go there because they know that guys that like them are going to be you there see too. The guys that want a fat girl are going. Where is it? Just asking for a friend. Where's the? Oh, I'm sure that you have to you have to find those events on Facebook. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a woman that, in Toronto that used to organize parties, but okay. I, I haven't. Uh, I was. I was like. I was really impressed with it because my attitude is like, yeah, like I'm. I mean, my my wife is would be considered BBW. I guess mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the definition really is of what the I, the parameters is. But my attitude was like, if that's what you like, if that's what you like, there's your example of coming and get it. You know, like and the women were like, this is who I am, and if you're a dude, be you know, you can't try to change me or expect me to lose weight or fit to some kind of mold that you want this is who i am yeah. and i i was quite impressed i didn't like all the outfits yeah. i'm not gonna lie some of the outfits were like whoa yeah but but the latex hey, thing well they were just bigger girls yeah. really tiny outfits a lot of attitude yeah. and i'm like hey if that's what if that's you yeah. great and if yeah, well, you yeah. watch that great well they were definitely wearing an outfit that that complimented what they thought was the best part of them. Right. So there were a lot of outfits that pushed up the boobs to a yep. certain level, or that said complimented the ass. And it's it's always sort of a funny, you know, whenever if whenever a woman will take a selfie and then she holds the like the camera like way up here, that's what, which that's is what fat girls do. That's, that's yeah, it's just this massive shot of cleavage because you know that well, yeah, here we go. Sense. This is what I got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, anything with a, a lot of like, cleavage showing and. Uh, yeah. Um, I, but Darren, I, I, would I would definitely wait for your wife to call herself a BBW before you call herself that. Just, I, I don't. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But I wanted to find out from the podcast. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say uh, she yeah. was. I said I don't know if that's if she would fit that definition. Oh, but I would I always wait for one woman to say that. that this right. is what I am. Right. I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'm not, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll BBW. I always tell people to respect my, my space fat girl angles. That's why we like the pictures from above. Mm -hmm. We love those pictures because, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, tits, chin, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> you know what your skills are. Yeah, it's exactly. It's a reflection in selfies. Exactly. What, yeah, anyway, what was if the... you're taking a picture from below, that's a nightmare. Well, that's, yeah, it's not done. Nobody looks good at Darren, what were the, uh, you had some uh, uh, health issues that you wanted to bring oh, up? Oh, right. Yeah, so uh, I'm 50, and when you turn 50 in Canada, how old are you now, Dave? Well, I'm 48, <laughs> but I can play 40, I think I can play 41 on TV. Okay. All right. a or a really beaten up 39. So <laughs> you've got you've got a couple of years to go, but when you turn 50, your doctor triggers this test. And it's a colon cancer test. So I'm like, yeah, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. And I was even okay with that part. You know, yeah. going through the back door with a finger and figuring out. I'm like, I don't, all right, you know, like, whatever, just don't wear a watch, that old joke, whatever. <laughs> but what he actually sent me was a small kit. It looks like the size of a USB stick. And I've got to collect my own shit and put it inside this little thing and then ship this. Somewhere. Um, well, not somewhere. Yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, it's in a, like a yeah. laboratory. You're not going to 
Santa Claus at the North Pole. You, you yeah. put it in That's the mail and they know where it goes. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they so, didn't give you a to-do list. I, I know where I'd send it. I know who I'd send it to. I, I don't know how to collect it. I said to my wife, I said, how the fuck am I supposed to collect this? Like, this That's isn't like, you know, like, am I supposed to, like, go in the toilet water with a little thing or, or what? And she's like, oh, well, my sister, you do as she did. And what, what did she do? I said, she just shat in a pizza box. I'm like, what? <laughs> she's like, yeah, she just shat. shat in a pizza box like my sister. Yeah, like, I'm like, <laughs> first of all, why is this the first time I'm hearing about this story? And second of all, what, what pizza box? Like, well, well, you must have Tupperware, Darren. You can shoot <laughs> Yeah, but I'm going to go to the dollar store and get a dollar Tupperware. I'm yeah. not using the high-end shit I use for my fucking soup and sandwiches. No. Wow, well, you could, you could, it's like, it's like people that like, I, I think you could probably. Come on, reuse you know, the Tupperware, reuse it. Reuse it. Reuse it. Yeah, oh. yeah, come on. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You should put a little X on it, then reuse it. And when someone comes over, then you just mm -hmm. feed them the X and then, you know, you're eating yeah. them out of the shit bowl. Or keep yeah. it, and if anyone else, I know, oh, you going for the colon cancer? You want to use my Tupperware? It's got an X on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would be like, oh, you're using the ship bowl. But I yeah. never I never even considered it, but I just, like, I thought it was very weird. Just, like, very specific pizza box shitting on a box. I'm like, can't you just use a cardboard box? Why does that have to be a pizza box? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, and not a used pizza box, right? It's, it's not like... You know, let's go down to the recycling bin and get the old pizza box and yeah. um, take a shit. And well, that's I'm not, not really gonna, aromatic. You know? I'm not going to go to pizza, pizza and get a new one. I'm not going to well, go, look, uh, can I just uh, not get the pizza, but just the box? I got a shit in this. That's, well, yeah, yeah, obviously. You order the pizza, you eat the pizza, you wait, you look at the box, you just wait. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't think yeah, It's the whole circle of. So you, had to, so, so you have to gather your shit. Yes. And, and then. And so, what what are these what are these tests for? Do you, do well, you even they'll know? check your they'll check your feces, and there's a way of them looking at for colon cancer reasons. And oh, okay. I'm sure there's enzymes or what. I don't know. Oh, oh, well, all they, I they, know is I should just put some fucking Captain Crunch in there and just fucking send that. Like that's my shit's gonna be eighty percent Captain Crunch. You should just put it. Actually, you should get a couple of pair. You should get a pair of dice, and then you, like then just <laughs> sink them inside this, and then and then the doctor goes, "Did you uh, did you?" Did this hurt coming out? It was like, no, 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 doctor, no big deal. Well, that's still my favorite jackass uh, video. Oh, when yeah. the guy shoves the car up his ass and then goes into the doctor. That's still by far my that's favorite. Right. Yeah, did yeah. the doctor call him like, the R word or something? Like, yeah, he <laughs> like, may the have. Really... <laughs> these kids, yeah. these kids, they get drunk and they do crazy things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, are you, but I mean, this is not, is this a, a, a 50, is a, an age 50 thing that they're doing? Yes. That? Cause, yes. All right. Because I didn't know this, though, but when, you, when, the, when the president travels, that he, he doesn't use public restrooms where they are. He has a, like a, a, basically like a toilet goes with him. Oh, um, really? Well, yeah, because they don't want, because if they, if, if anyone was to get their hands on the president's feces from knowing, the, from getting that, collection or that coll collected yeah they, they know they know what you're allergic to they know they can tell everything about your dna through your what your your shit is so it's like yeah there is a president <laughs> presidential toilet that travels with them either that somebody wants to find out what the president's allergic to through his shit and then trick him into eating it or something is that the kind it of assassination could we're doing now <laughs> Mary, is it, is it, many where did you get this from you get this from some fucking 4chan channel you're just talking about? What? No, I usually just wake <laughs> up and I have these ideas in my head and I figure that it must be true. Uh, no, I'll, I'll look into that, but I do think this is a thing. I don't know, man. That's fucking out there. I, I know. Well, but but the, that if if you if you could know what the president's allergic to or anyone anyone from anywhere, then they, they you could be po you could poison them. You could you could do all all sorts of. Uh, Pranks, you know, I don't know. <laughs> pranks. <laughs> Presidents love pranks. But uh, uh, why, why? I'm gonna send him some fucking pie, and I bet he'll. How do they transport too. that? They tra is that got its own car? Does the toilet have its own car? Like, is it a, is it a, some kind of converted thing where he just goes in this to car shits in there and then leaves? I, or I don't know all the ins and outs. I saw it on a TV show. Do they have the so. trolley? The the shit trolley? Like, 
Well, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and, you know, if we had a, if, if there was, if we had a producer, then someone would look it up for us, but I can't look it up now, but this is a thing I do believe. And I'll, yeah. I'll come back next week with all the information. See, to I me, like, I've always had all these weird fucking medical things. I remember when I was 18, I only just remembered this recently, that I had a pain in my groin and I had to go to the doctor and the doctor tried to explain to me that I had a peanut in my cock. <laughs> and then you go, doctor, that is my, that is my cock. No, like he's like, trying to explain to me. He's <laughs> like, sometimes when you eat something, your body, it spits it out like a small nut or a peanut. And I literally stopped. I said, wait, you're, are you, a, are you saying a, a peanuts in my cock? Like, well, you know, like a small sliver. I'm like, is that even possible? To travel through the urethra. The first one to fall asleep at a sleepover because somebody put a peanut in your cock. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly what happened. I would just hope it. I would just hope it's not a cashew because those are curved. Yeah, I would really. Yeah. Get me a fucking pizza box. I got to get this peanut out of my cock. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, but so I have, you got I nothing have to look forward to now. You don't have to wonder about when it's your turn to shit in a box. You'll have. You know, that's how I'm saving day. them now. Yeah, I've got yeah, 12, 15 save... pizza boxes in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> In case I yeah. have fucking diarrhea and I got to collect it, you know? Yeah. There, there's what about you, that... Dave? Dave, you must have some crazy medical stories, right? Oh, I had kidney stones once. You had kidney stones as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, it wasn't bad that it wasn't that bad for me, but I did have them. And, uh, um, and did but you just, have the standard? Did you have the standard? You were peeing, you passed out, and it was just on the floor. No, I felt I was I was trying to go to sleep, and I it literally felt like someone was punching me in the kidneys over yep. and over and over again. Yep. And so I took some Tylenol, and uh, it didn't go away. And then someone was like, "Oh, if you take Tylenol and upset stomach, that could make. Oh, if you take Tylenol, sometimes it can give you an upset stomach. If you if you hadn't eaten anything." And so I was like, oh, that's, that must have been it. So I ignored it for another hour. And uh, then I was rushed down to the, I think, St. Mike's and uh, hospital. And they just, they shot me up with like a morphine and a gravel. And I eventually, and I was just so fucking high. I just peed it out. But there was my, my girlfriend at the time came with me. And, um, and uh, so she's standing beside the bed that I'm in. And then these two doctors come in. One was the younger guy, I guess, like a apprentice. I don't know. Intern, uh, and then the intern. other doctor. Yeah. And so they have to. They have to. We're going to want to lift up my sheet, the sheet that I was in, and do some poking around. And um, and then they kind of looked at me, and they looked at her, and I was, and I looked at my girlfriend. I said, "Would it be okay if you sort of left for this?" And then so she gets up, and I could tell I was one of those moments when a woman walks away, and you go like, "Oh man, this is going to be bad." It's like then I, because I knew she was going to come back angry at me because I asked her to leave. And then so these, the two doctors poke around a bit and then she comes back in and she was just like, what was that? Why did you ask me to leave? I've seen you naked before. And I was just like, yes, but you haven't seen me naked with like two Korean guys poking around in my bag, you know? <laughs> well, like, I hope we, not. We don't need to, we don't need to share that moment. I hope not, Dave. I hope that um, she hadn't. Um, no, it'd be kind of weird if she had. If she yeah. wanted to stay, it was just like, no, no, that has happened before. And she's like, oh, this has happened before. No, well, there's always a float, like, a chain gang. He's like, what, you like these guys better than me? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. You prefer these guys to me? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly turns into there's a... something a, a that really... I can't understand between you guys here that, you know? <laughs> Dave's kinks yeah. all come out. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that is not one of them. I did not want to be cucked by three, uh, uh, <laughs> two Korean doctors. No, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so it just it just came out like you were in bed and it just pops out. No, I went I I, I went to go and piss and then uh, I I piss in this container and then they took another look at it and then there was it was Pizza floating box? in the urine and it was just like it was like a sloshy maraca that's what it was yeah. it was filled with piss and one kidney stone. Hey there, this is Vesta Suicide and Tita Suicide of SuicideGirls.com. And you are listening to Anything Goes with Darren Frost and Dave Martin on Sirius XM Radio's Laugh Attack. Do you love it? Oh, I do. I seriously do. Thank you so much. from 
Did you did you watch it? Did you see it? No, because like a bunch of people sent it to me. I don't even want to watch it. I don't like watching mine. You know, like right. it's just it's not something I want to watch. Yeah. Like I want to compare. Like, what happened? Ooh, my my video is better. Like, I, what's the point of me watching? Yeah, it would be kind of. It would be weird if you posted yours in the comments of. Yeah. Is. Yeah. So. No. Wait, what happened? Somebody threw a bottle at him. I don't know who this fellow. Oh, was. John Caparello is a comic. He used to be on Chelsea Handler all the time. And okay, he, yeah, yeah, he's got a Netflix thing. Yeah, yeah and right. someone, I guess, oh. someone threw a glass at him when he was on stage, and okay. I haven't watched it. I just bookmarked it. I haven't. I'll watch it. Soon, but wow, because they're mad at his joke. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I don't even know what happened, but okay. I know Darren has a, has a similar clip. So that happened to you? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's my yeah, really? like, it's my most popular video online. It's got millions of views. It's <sighs> yeah. I wish I never posted it to be honest. Oh, don't say that. You. Oh you... yeah, no. Oh come I'm, on. No. It's all good. For really. Me. I no, because it's... it didn't benefit me. It's not like a, it's putting asses in the seats. It's just no, it, it, it it created a, a situation where people just think that's my thing. Right. Why did he do that to you? I, the, the story is I was in London, Ontario, doing an X-rated show. I had done about 35 or 40 minutes of pretty horrible AIDS, you know, cancer material. And then I did a joke and someone heckled me. Oh. And I made I did a dead mom joke. And he whips a glass at me and hits me. The video's online. And it's right. horrible. And uh, but it was, at, of, it was, was really say, hurt. It was at an X-rated show, and and you can tell by the clip because the kind of like Darren was doing well. He was killing. Yeah. And then yeah. someone yelled something, and the line that he said back is a bit. It's sort of like you know. It's like a. It, it's it's like hack. A, it's a hacky line that I kind of yeah. changed. But right. All it, I said. All I said was. They wanted to control the show, and I just made a big point about you don't control the show, just shut up, pretty much. And they're like, do it again, do it again. And I said, this isn't a choose your own adventure story where I turn to page 54 and I fuck your. You know, folks, sometimes comics have to go on the road and perform for monkeys, right? Moose Jaw, 2001. End of joke. watched the show so far. This is no choose your own adventure story. <laughs> if you can turn to page 85, it turns out I fucked your mother. <laughs> and you don't want to know what she whispered in my ear. Yo! Oh, oh, his mother's dead. Or I will call the police, because that's assault, cunt. Pardon me? That is assault. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Fuck up. Fuck up next time. In all respect. All respect to the show. Hey, man, I didn't ask him to be a fucking monkey. He yelled shit out. That's not how a show works. Like, I knew his mother passed away. Now, now I'm going to lead into another land. <laughs> on why kids have no fucking respect sometimes. <laughs> now, folks, legally, I don't have to continue this show. I can't stop. I am actually in pain right now. That did not fucking feel like a feather, okay? <laughs> but I'll do a few more minutes. Because I don't like shit like that, okay? He fucking brought it on himself. I don't care if you like me or hate me. Shut the fuck up.
mother. Right. <laughs> it's the old fuck your mother. It's a hack joke, but I added the choose your own adventure story. And then it turns out the guy's mom died recently and he freaked out. Oh, and then he no. threw a glass at me and, he, and there's all, you know, the video's online. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's got millions of views. I haven't made a dime from it. Um, they're going to use it on this season's MTV ridiculousness or whatever. So I might see money from that. I haven't got the check yet. But it's just, it's dogged my <laughs> career because people just think now I'm, I'm like a heckler killer or throw glass at me. I'm that guy. And it's he's just. Canada, Steve, he's Canada's Steve Hofstetter. Yeah, which just drives me <laughs> fucking nuts. Yeah. I got no problem with Steve Hofstetter. That's what he wants to market himself as. But I'm just tired of these heckler killers. It's like, I don't like hecklers. I don't want them at shows. I don't no. have to fucking deal with them. And no. these guys just breed this this sense of like, yeah, come to the show and yell shit out at me. Like, well, uh, but Steve Hofstetter, he, he asked for that. He apparently that's my he does, point. Yeah, that's my he, point. He does like an hour for forty. He does like forty five minutes, and at the end, he says, "Now, if you guys want to heckle me or uh, yeah or, or do something like that, yeah, some people he, like that, right? Well, I know, but when but if you're putting it out like, look, I'm dealing with this rowdy crowd, and really the whole time <laughs> it's like you're asking people to. You're, you're creating so there's a documentary yeah. called Heckler that Jamie Kennedy put out years ago. And it's it's an okay documentary, but I have a real problem with it because what he did is he did a tour of Western Canada and purposely bombed on shows to try to get heckled. And my attitude is that's not real heckling. Real heckling is watching someone who's trying to do it right and then he's mm. getting fucked over by someone in the crowd. That's heckling mm. to me. Right. This yeah. other version is just a so. setup to heckling. It's like a fucking magic trick where you know the answer. What's the yeah. point? But nowadays, it's sort of like I'm, it's. I mean, yeah, you can say that you didn't that you wish you hadn't have put it out, but it's good that you have the video of it because it's sort of like one of those stories where you're sort of like, there's a part of you that you're sort of like, that didn't happen. And oh, you're I like, know. Oh, oh, yes, it did. Oh, oh, Dave, gonna... you don't know this part. So after it happened, so just to, not to get too much into this. The only reason I videotaped that show is because I was getting reports that I wasn't doing well at clubs when I was destroying. So I started recording every show on purpose. So if they said to me, you didn't do well this one weekend, I could be like, I'm coming into the office. I'm bringing all five shows. Yeah. I killed on all five shows. I have video. Right. So that's why I taped it. And after it happened, the manager of the club, manager slash owner, Came upstairs when there was no crowd and said, Darren, do you want to get paid? And I said, hey, Connie, do you want to see me get assaulted on your stage? And she's like laughing. And I'm like, no, Connie, I'm serious. She's like, what are you talking about? So the owner manager was in the fucking place, didn't even know that shit went down. Well, there were nachos downstairs. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> no. But yeah, so I have, I have hundreds of tapes of shows of me... You know, arguing with hecklers, almost getting attacked. I haven't gone through them. I could have through COVID and put out little videos and YouTube clips, but I'm just like, it's so fucking not me anymore. You should hire one of your kids to do that. <laughs> oh, maybe when I'm dead. <laughs> oh, man, then you're going to get bookings. Then you're going to be a yeah. draw. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we'll just drop you out on stage. We'll roast you for every stage. You're just your dead body. Weekend at Bernie's it. And at the end, someone will just throw a fucking pizza box on stage and the show is over. Yeah, we, we get the Frosties. I think he hung himself. He's going to yeah. shit himself. Put the pizza box <laughs> on stage. No, no, no. He, he died in his sleep. He won't shit himself. He's the president bringing this toilet. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right. All right.